This is Kit Boga. He is a scam baiting YouTuber. What he does is he calls up tech support scammers and he wastes their time. It's pretty funny content. He comes up with really goofy ways to waste their time and piss them off. However, he has a new endeavor, Seraph Secure, which I am not a fan of. The concept of Seraph Secure? Very cool. It's an anti-scam software. Basically what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to detect whenever remote access software is running on your system or whatever shady shit's happening that scammers typically do and then it's supposed to warn you about it. Now the idea of this, again, very cool. The execution, trash. If you go to pricing, yes, you need to pay a monthly subscription to protect yourself against scams. If you get the free plan, you can only get it on a singular personal device, and you can block existing scam threats, so if you already have remote access uh, software on your computer, and block remote connections. So essentially, it'll prevent you from running remote access tools. If you want any of the actual more relevant features, like blocking scam websites to begin with, then you need to pony up that $4 a month. And even then, you only get it on a singular device. You would need to pay this several times for multiple devices, or you would need to get their $14 a month plan that gets it up to 10 devices. This just sucks, okay? I'm not a fan of this at all. Paywalling protection and paywalling security is not something I am fond of. Not to mention typo protection, new domain alerts, and blocking scam websites and blocking virus pop-ups is something you can do yourself very easily for free. So these are really just snake oil salesman garbage extra features that they just slapped on top to make it look more appealing, in my opinion. They need accounts too, which I hate so much. Because rather than this just being a local program that runs on your computer, it needs to communicate back and forth with their servers. It requires you to have an account, which obviously, if you know anything about companies getting data breaches and whatnot, it happens all the time, even to really big companies. So Seraph Secure, it's honestly, it's inevitable that there's going to be some kind of data breach someday in the future. And then you have a bunch of people's credentials just being leaked out. Like, come, come on, why? I don't want an account for everything literally all of these companies love to make just everything require an account nowadays which i just hate there's a video on the website where he talks about serif secure and whatnot and he shows it off there's an initial device scan you click it it has this threat scanner and it neutralized 28 items and it lists all of these i don't like the design of the ui very much and you can even see this part's very cool so if because scammers will often open up command prompt and type in commands to try to make it look like, you know, hey, look, see, it says connections and it says all this stuff. There's hackers on your computer. So you'll even see one of the common commands they use is netstat. When it runs, it does warn you about deceptive activity. I'm a fan of that. It texts your family whenever, when your, fa whenever your grandma or whatever has suspicious activity going on. I like that. But generally, I'm not. I feel like this could be done a lot better, okay? I don't like the execution. Now, you may have been staring at this tab here. They have a GitHub. It must be open source, right? Wrong. So, the, rather than it being open source, which would kind of just be expected of a tool like this, instead, it's closed source proprietary. All they have is two forks of existing software that they just made minor tweaks to. The real main program is not open source. So I got to talking with my team, Raven, and we were like, hey, what if we took Serif Secure, but if we made it? If you guys are familiar with Talon, a tool we made for debloating Windows, and you understand our philosophies with software, then you'll know how this is about to go. So I do want to get some things out of the way. This is a proof of concept. It's not final yet. There's obviously a lot of work that needs to be done still, but that's why I'm making this video. Consider this video a devlog. I want your guys' feedback. I'm going to show what we have so far. I'd like you guys to, you know, I, I'd like to show it to you guys. I want to hear what you guys like, what you guys don't like, what you guys think should be added, removed, whatever, because I want this tool to be as best it can be because I want to launch this eventually. So here's text scan block. Now you may be wondering why there's all this garbage here instead of an exe file. This is all of the stuff that gets turned into an exe file. So we haven't actually put it into a singular exe file yet. 
So this is all of the uncompiled just code here. And I'm going to be showing it off with this today just because I haven't gotten around to building the EXE yet. Whenever you download this, it will be a singular portable EXE file, which will be pretty cool because then you can even put it on a USB and carry it with you. Whenever you run this, the idea is it's going to ask you the first time you run it, hey, do you want to add this to startup? So that way it will start automatically every time you log in. And generally the idea is it's supposed to just sit in the background. It's a set and forget type deal. So let's go ahead and run it. It's asking for administrator privileges here. So it's going to black out my screen. This is for testing and development purposes. So this window won't exist. What it will actually happen is it'll just run silently in the background. You will know it's even there. But it does create a tray icon. And I believe typically it's hidden away in the sys tray right here. And so it's it's very out of the way you you don't you one once you set this you can your grandma gets a new laptop right you can get the you can grab her computer real quick install this and hand it back to her and she would be she you know it would be still just regular old windows she wouldn't have any pop-ups or any stuff you know bothering her so but if she finds then it's this and is wondering what it is she can click it and it'll tell her Tech scan block. It's a simple program that prevents your system from being accessed remotely. It'll tell, it'll give a brief description of what remote access tools are. And then it says, if someone you don't completely trust is asking you to disable this, don't do it. And then it says, if you're talking to a scammer, you should hang up and call someone you trust, like a family member or your bank. And then it'll give this link. And this link will lead to a page that'll provide a lot more information and resources uh, if about tech support scams and whatnot. So this page doesn't exist yet, by the way. If you're gonna try to go to it, I'll just warn you right now, as of recording, it is just not, it doesn't exist yet, but we're going to make that, you know, once this tool is ready. Even if you right click it, you can see what is this program and exit. So when you click exit, it does just immediately exit. I think it would be nice if it had like a warning pop up, like, hey, if you're on the phone with someone telling you to disable this, don't do it, you know? And then this leads to the same pop up, so you may want to actually see this in action what does it actually look like whenever you block a remote access tool so team viewer and AnyDesk are two very common tools used by scammers to access people's computers uh, i know there's a lot more but i'm just going to use these for the demonstration so i'll go ahead and run AnyDesk, and when you run it it immediately says likely scam prevented and it gives you this window now right off the bat you may be like this window doesn't look too good the original idea was we should try to make these windows look as close to default Windows UIs as possible because I think the really crazy custom flashy looking UIs, you know, would be a lot more bothersome. So, but I do think it would benefit from like suspicious activity detected being in big text at the top and consolidating this down to be more digestible. I think that would be helpful. So, but this is what it looks like for now. And I'll run it again because I want to show that the OK button has a countdown. So you actually need to wait five seconds to close it. it that's to try to get you to read it. And there's also this overlay. So you can't click away from it until you close the, the dialog, until you close the window. And it blocks all monitors. Uh, so that way it really tries to get you to read it. And then I'll even show a team viewer. So if you run team viewer, the setup is not actually blocked. But if I were to install it or just run it a single time and I click accept and run, team viewer itself takes a minute to get itself ready to run. So this long pause here is team viewer, not uh, the tool that not not our tool. But if we wait a moment for team viewer to start up, as soon as it tries to start up, there you go. So it does a pretty good job at blocking and for whatever reason let's say you try to spam start remote access processes so if i just spam start any desk you see it does start up in the background and then dies so this tool is pretty good about killing off uh any running remote access processes quite efficiently and it does it in a way that i think is pretty non-intrusive because again it's very out of your way until it needs to be so there you go and it doesn't rely on any external servers or anything this is running entirely locally on your machine it doesn't require i mean hell you could do this without an internet connection you know if you wanted to it still works
So let me show, because you're probably wondering, well, how many remote access tools does this actually block? And I'll go ahead and show you that. So if I open this up, now uh, starting from here, you can see, yeah, <laughs> there's quite a, there's, there's a, a couple. <laughs> there, yeah, there's a, there's a few. So we block all of these. Uh, and all the major ones are here too. So Team Viewer, we have AnyDesk, we have Go to Assist, we have uh, let's see Zoho Assist, we have Supremo, we have ConnectWise, and all of them, the ones that I just listed are all the major remote access tools that I'm uh, that I know personally that a lot of scammers use. Mainly, I haven't ever really seen scammers using some of these other ones, but we added them just in case, and we even have obscure shit like Rust Desk and shit. So. And, and scammers likely aren't going to be using rust desk but still you know it's it's we want to be extra cautious and of course since this will be open source and it's written in python it's very easy to contribute and add more as time goes on and people can easily help make this better so you may be no, you may notice though that there's no code for command prompt stuff so if i were to try to run one of those command prompt commands like netstat it doesn't actually uh, prevent that. Now, that's because I actually don't quite know how to block specific command prompt commands. So what I'm thinking instead is we'll make it so that command if you open command prompt or PowerShell or any other like administrator tool for Windows, it'll just give you a, a heads up. It'll give you a warning like, hey, what you're running is typically not, it's not normal to access this for, you know, unless if you know exactly what you're doing. If a scammer's telling you to open this, it's, you know, he's scamming you. Don't, don't open this list if you know exactly what you're doing. You know, it can be deceptive. I think we'll do that instead. I think that'll be a good counter. Now, you may also notice this doesn't block malicious sites. It doesn't block, you know, all of that stuff. And I'll explain. So... A lot of this is snake oil salesman garbage, in my opinion. Typo protection, new domain alerts. This stuff is handled by Google Safe Browsing if you have it in your browser. I feel like most non-tech savvy users are using a Chromium-based browser like Chrome and Edge and all that. And I think Google Safe Browsing is built into all of those, as far as I'm aware. So that automatically does it and if you don't have google safe browsing enabled because i'm not sure if it's enabled by default or not you know what would stop this and you know it would also stop uh you know what would also stop blocking scam websites you know what would stop fake virus pop-ups a good dns provider and an ad block so if you get an ad block like you block origin and you go to filter lists there's phishing URL block list and a malicious URL block list and all these other block lists. And if you didn't know, most scam websites that you're going to get to, you get to through scams, uh, through ads, I meant, on, on like Google, on a news site or whatever, a pop-up ad or whatever. An ad block will block that stuff. So rather than seeing the scammy ads, clicking on it and then being prevented, why don't we just go to the root cause of the problem and rip it out from its roots? So you can block the ads to begin with. And then also, if you use a DNS provider like Quad9, my personal favorite, then they block malware, phishing, spyware, and botnet sites. They block it entirely. You can't even connect to them. And they have up-to-the-minute lists. So the, the, their lists of malicious sites update by the minute. Literally, that's way better. And you get it for free. <laughs> Now, the alert family members thing is something Seraph, uh, Seraph Secure one-ups on our tool, because I don't even think this is possible to accomplish without having some kind of server infrastructure and having the app communicate with a server, which we don't want to do. We want it to be entirely local on your device. So it warning family members and stuff is not something that our tool will be capable of, I don't think. So there you go. But... I think generally just telling the person who gets the pop-up like, hey, call somebody is the best we can do in that regard. And of course, since you won't need to pay and it won't be locked down and restricting you to a single device and all that, you can install this on whatever systems you want.
So, yes, there's more to be done here. And that's why I'm making this video, because I wanted to show you guys what I have so far. And I want to know what you guys think on how I should improve it. So, please, if you have any feedback to help make this better, let me know in the comments. I like Serif Secure as a concept, but I really want to see a competitor to it that is that meets my standards that's actually open source that runs locally on your system and doesn't require you and doesn't pay wall that doesn't pay wall security and that doesn't pay wall features that will help prevent you from getting scammed because i think that's kind of fucked up again i have no beef with kitboga as a youtuber but that whole serif secure thing i just it's just kind of scummy in my opinion so with that in mind that's about it see ya